mixed plate goes to New York City. Tonight we'll visit some of the people and places in the most exciting city in the world. And you'll have orchestra seats to the Carnegie Hall debut of the Brothers Casimero. This is Manhattan Mixed Plate. There are nine million people in the naked city, and all of them seem to want to get somewhere at the same time. The prime people mover is the New York subway, which has proven itself the most reliable, efficient, and enjoyable mass transit system, if you can forget the horror stories. Guardian Angels. While the Red Beret volunteer patrolmen rarely confront a King Kong, they do discourage muggers, rapists, and pushers on the trains and in the streets. National Director of the Guardian Angels is Lisa Sliwa, model, actress, karate black belt, and wife of founder Curtis Sliwa. We go to the fullest extent of the law, which is where there is a visual deterrent so that if you're riding in a car and you see the Guardian Angels, you can feel safe, you can relax, you don't have to worry about what's happening. If, though, we see somebody, say, harassing a woman, we'll go and we'll surround that person until the situation calms down. Patrol starts here at the West 46th Street headquarters. Volunteers are frisked before donning the traditional white t-shirt and red beret. Angels are not allowed to carry weapons or drugs. Average age is 17. Of the 350 angels in New York, most are black or Puerto Rican. They must have jobs or go to school. A three-month training course familiarizes them with martial arts, CPR, and the New York Penal Code. On duty, the angels show no emotion. This is serious business. Many have been hurt and some killed in this war against street crime. But you realize that in any war, there's always casualties and that you cannot let that deter you from doing the job that we've set out to do. There are many people who depend upon the guardian angels, who look to us as their only, only means of protection and who without our work would have been victims of crime. So you have to think of the positive and focus on that and try and take as many precautions as you can without having that fear take hold of you. Lisa says the Angels would gladly meet with Hawaii officials to discuss crime prevention in our proposed mass transit system. The Guardian Angels are out there, she says, to make sure people moving remains a safe, pleasant, even joyful experience.
When the sun goes down, New Yorkers discard their three-piece formality and trek to Soho, where they willingly submit to a full frontal lumbotomy. Chorando se foi quem um dia só me fez chorar. Chorando se foi quem um dia só me fez chorar. Chorando estará. SOV, or Sounds of Brazil, is the hottest dance floor north of the Amazon. The lombada, which means to whip or ram, is performed with a man's right leg nestled between the thighs of his partner. No wonder it was banned in Brazil and applauded in Paris. The forbidden dance is now unleashing the libidos of certified public accountants all over New York City, transforming them into dancing pagans under the spell of that jungle rhythm. Some people refer lombada to hot loins. Some people refer to um, lombada with, from a Brazilian term, which means to bash. So two dancers are dancing very close to each other. The man essentially um, offering the guidance. He's leading the, da the, the female dancer. Um, the woman straddles the man's hips on one side. Lambada has been called an alternative to sex in this age of social disease. The better dancers quickly work up a sweat and literally marinate in each other's sensuality. You can dance Lambada very close together and get really, really turned on. Is it tough getting those advertising executives and accountants to cut loose? <laughs> not at all, not at all. They're like willing to just rip off their tie and get loose. Absolutely, matter of fact, I just wanted to take, rip this tie off, rip off this shirt and just start putting a, a bandana and some purple thing around my waist. <laughs> um, it's, it's great for loosening up the spirits. I got a lambada, I said to New York choreographer Tom Knudsen, who agreed to teach me the basics. We're going to go step, step, step. Okay, still one, two, three. You don't do the lambada alone. The whole point of this is together. You're pushing forward, that you're pushing right into my thigh. As I'm pushing forward, I'm pushing into your thigh. Woman. I should slap you! <laughs> <laughs> this is New York, I'd mug you. <laughs> slap me, sweetheart. <laughs> It's no aloha land here. So let's try it. You're going to go back. Just let your head go. There, trust me. That's it. <laughs> yes. Oh, you've been studying, you little devil. <laughs> yes. Go back. Really push into. Yes. That's not that good. Again. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Low on the saddle, girl. And. <laughs> yes. And. Da da. Da da. Five, six, seven, and. Bum, buddy. Bum, buddy. An hour lesson may not make you sambada to lambada with, but it's enough to get you on the dance floor. Before long, the room becomes one writhing mass of bodies caught in this Brazilian madness. At SOB, it doesn't matter who you're with or where you're at, as long as there's a lot of lambada.
A taxi ride in the heat of rush hour may seem like commuter hell, but it does provide a charming glimpse of Manhattan's many commercial centers and neighborhoods, each with its own style and flavor. Another famous neighborhood, one not known for its sightseeing or shopping. This is 122nd Street. We're in the heart of Harlem. C Choir of the Manhattan Christian Reformed Church has much to be thankful for. Each member is a former alcohol or substance abuser, reformed through Jesus Christ. Jesus. You let Jesus in. Jesus. Then you have that blessed assurance that you'll never have to walk alone. Yeah. You're discovering that can nobody wash away your sin. Wow. Nobody can make you whole again. Yeah. Nobody can do what Jesus can do for you. Somebody can take us to have some ice cream and uh -huh. soda and things. Yes. And I'm going to have a celebration. Yes, yes. Because for 21 years of my life, I didn't have a drug-free party. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have me a drug-free birthday. Amen. Say amen. 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 Because if it's left up, up to us, we'll be still seeking the, the drug. So you gotta find Christ. be doing? Oh, I'll be surfing. I'll be getting me a suntan, although I already have a suntan, but. <laughs> I'll be laid back in one of them long chairs with tall drinks in my hand, cooling out. Uh, hello. <laughs> Dreams of Hawaii may not be so far-fetched. Manhattan Island turns tropical when the Casimeros play Carnegie. Mugo, you call Jeff. You're talking you to Leah. Jeff Akaka is the Reverend Akaka's youngest son. He's a doctor. Ex-Islanders came from D.C., Boston, Chicago, even as far as Dallas, to a welcoming party for the Brothers Casimero and their performing company. We went today to see Carnegie for the first time, and I just sat there and kind of shook for a little while, trying to look for a wanton min to kind of calm my nerves, you know. We've been meeting a lot of people from Hawaii that lived here for years, and um, want to leave them, leave them with the aloha. Hi. And I'd like to leave him here, please. <laughs> You're always honing in on my interviews, Robert. I'm very nervous. Ah, okay. I'm more nervous about this than I was in Japan. Um, because? Because they don't know who the hell we are here. They don't know. I mean, the Japanese, they don't know who we are either, but they didn't know who we were in a different language. You know, if, if anyone had told us years ago that, that New, New York or that Carnegie Hall would be a part of our musical career, I, I would have said, where's Carnegie Hall? You go Malka on Lexington and then turn Eva on 57th and it's Mackay of Central Park. Oh, this is the tightest cab I've ever been in. Yeah. Hello. And how do you get there? Practice, practice, practice.
9 a.m. Carnegie Day, the company arrives. So, we're going to buy a car. Good morning, New York. 800 pounds of flowers flown in from Hawaii await stringing. The fortunate thing is that plumerias don't travel well. Orchids do. So first thing we're going to have to do is throw away some of these precious things. And then we have to make lace for the show and to put for the labels that'll be in front uh, in the lobby. All kinds of lace for sale. <laughs> Just a quarter for this is just How much are you selling them for? Just a quarter for two. <laughs> um, it's a steal. They're going to uh, go for uh, New York prices. Which is about $50. $50. Yeah. For the next 11 hours, the company will remain backstage preparing the flowers, instruments, and sets and fine tuning the numbers for tonight's performance. What a day. p.m., two hours before showtime. The house is nearly sold out, despite the fact many New Yorkers thought these were the brothers Karamazov, a Russian juggling act. The early crowd sets the geography straight. It is 40 degrees out, but there are mu'us covered with sweaters and trench coats covered with maili. We came all the way from Florida, from Hawaii first, <laughs> to see the brother Casimiro's at the Carnegie Hall. Thought it was a very honor, uh, a okay. special thing. I grew up with the Brothers Casimero, so just thinking, um, having them coming up here to New York gave us a chance to come up to New York and listen to their music. Overcome by the madness of the moment, Paka Worthington of Washington, D.C. strips to his waist and whips out a conch shell. PM. The audience is seated. No Hawaiian time here. Carnegie waits for no one. For New Yorkers unfamiliar with lay day etiquette, the brothers offer advice. When you give a lay to someone, if a Hawaiian gives a lay to someone, and if later on they just put it on the arm of their chair, <laughs> don't give them one next year. <laughs> they get what we Hawaiians call the hookies. The hands kind of come crooked like this, and the mouth comes right kind of like that, like this. You know? So, let's say that uh, in this night, we are going to be
workers a lesson in Aloha. The brothers are now off to a post-performance gala where they'll show Manhattan the meaning of mahalo. It's just like a dream, and then to be able to do it. What a neat feeling to play at Carnegie Hall. What did you feel from the audience? Love, love. Appreciation, aloha, longing. That, that they should enjoy it so much, that they should embrace it and love it as much as we do, was satisfying and, and gratifying. And it just makes me want to go do it again. for joining us in our adventures in New York City. And a special mahalo to Robert and Roland Casimero, who turned this Big Apple into a bigger pineapple. That's Mixed Plate in Manhattan. I'm Pamela Young. Ready for this? Bungee off this thing. <laughs> Almost here.